Hey there everyone, it's Mike again from Cavill and I'm still, still on my mission. So I'm a man on a mission to try and help as many hospitality businesses as I possibly, possibly, possibly can. Um, and the ways and means that I look to do that is through obviously these videos um, and also trying to help provide more simplicity, simple solutions, simple solutions around people, around pay, uh, around pensions to try and help give you back time time that you can then reinvest and reallocate in your business to make you a success so today today's video what i want to do today is try something new so i've not done one of these types of videos yet um, so let's see how this goes i'm going to touch and see um, but i may do these once a week or once a month i'm not too sure yet so bear that in mind but here we go so today I want to do the top five. So today's top five, five, got them all on there. Top five is around people management problems. The problems you have within management of your staff and people. Here we go, get ready. And in at number five, number five is action versus inaction. So if you've subscribed, you've seen some of the videos before, um, what we talk about in one of the previous ones is around action versus inaction. And what this means is this is mainly based around conflict management. So people and managers don't tend to want to sit down and have those really awkward conversations where you have to tell people there's something wrong and they don't agree with you. So one of the easiest solutions to that is to brush it under the rug and get rid of it. Throw it away and ignore that it ever even occurred and carry on with the status quo. The trouble is, is carrying on with the status quo means you've still got the same problem because that has actually been solved, it's still there. And actually it's gonna then grow and get bigger and become a bigger issue and impact on further people, on, on further con concerns that are happening out there within your business. So if you take like performance as one of them, if you have one poor performing member of your team, what will happen if you do not deal with that or take any action against it, it's gonna carry on, it's gonna impact on morale, it may spread to other people who think, well, if they can do that and get away with that, then I'll do exactly the same. And all of a sudden you go from one bad performing person to a bad performing team, which is a much bigger issue to try and deal with. So avoiding the difficult conversations and avoiding the difficult problems and trying not to do anything about it, you think it's solving things, but in actual fact, it's making them worse and costing you more time and more money. So in, in at number four, employment law. I didn't design that by chance, actually. I didn't realize that rhymed. But employment law is the next biggest issue for most small businesses dealing with staff. Is an actual fact, you know what? It changes twice a year, twice a year. So most commonly you'll see changes that will come in within April and you'll see changes that will be on the horizon soon in October. Uh, what that means is you need to be on the ball with what those impacts mean. It may not just be an increase in the minimum wage. Um, it may not just be actual other changes around small issues, uh, maybe an extra bank holiday, hey, who knows? Um, but it could be more systemic things that you need to be aware of, things you may not even be conscious of that an impact on you today, but maybe tomorrow. So examples of that would be around data protection. That's something that people are quite unaware of, but will be filtering itself in, but despite Brexit. We won't be outside the European Union by the time that law comes into action. So we will be inheriting that. So there'll be things like that that will tend to come in. And what you need to be aware of is what's the impact of that then on my contracts for my staff? What's the impacts on that in relation to maybe staff handbooks? Uh, what's the impact on me in terms of recruiting people? Um, 
all those sorts of things and how I actually deal with people and manage my staff. So those are the most common problems that we tend not to hear about, or if we do, it's only because it's come on the BBC News as the biggest headline thing that's come out on that particular session of change. There could be other smaller things that you haven't seen mentioned, so keeping up to speed on those is actually quite important. And those things that they get forgotten. They get forgotten. It's boring, right? And in at number three, number three, we've got capability and performance management of both staff and teams. So touched upon this kind of briefly in number five around action versus inaction, but this is it in the four. One of the biggest things is around, actually, I think I've got a problem. I don't think this person's performing quite right. But I don't know how to actually, I don't know how to actually confirm this is the case and, and how do I get around that? So one of the things you need to do is identify the performance gap. What's the gap in performance? So if I drew a circle, and that was the entirety of the job that you thought someone was going to do, and actually, they're just filling a small part of it. The bits that aren't coloured in are the bits that they're not completing of the job. It's the bits that they can't do. So what you need to do is say, well, rather than shrink the job to meet the person, the person needs to expand to fill the role. Um, and trying to focus and show and highlight what those examples are of that poor, poor performance is actually going to be quite important to actually putting that forward to anybody. And then also, what's the impact of that performance and capability on both future people coming in, existing people coming in, your teams, the morale that's happening there. Again, we spoke about that in the action versus inaction, but it's actually quite an important thing for people to actually think about. And the next important thing around capability and performance is once you've identified the problem, once you can actually evidence the problem, you need to actually take action against the problem and deal with it. Actually find out what levels of support you can put in place for people, what levels of training that needs to be taking place to help people to grow into that role. So, in at number two, at number two, we're looking at recruitment and retention. So, this is actually quite a big one. You might have thought this would be number one. But at number two, we've got the recruitment and retention conundrum. So, what do we do and what's the impact of Brexit? Yeah, I said it. I said the B word, Brexit. So, what you've got to think about is if you've caught all the fish from the pond you've been fishing in for years and there's no more left there, you may need to look at a different pond. So in that sense of things, you need to think outside the box. You need to think about where else you can look to recruit your staff. Do you need to lower your standards? Do you need to do more training? Do we need to make more investment in other staff and in the different areas to where you normally have looks, where people already have the skills and expertise to come and just step in and fill those kind of roles. But you need to get your head out the game of Brexit is impacting on me. Brexit means I can't recruit people and I can't retain people because they're gonna go. Because everyone I've got from Eastern European countries will not be here anymore. They're gonna go. Get your head out of that game, start looking elsewhere, start looking at what else you can do, start looking at how you can actually secure your teams and make them quite strong through the existing processes you actually have so people don't want to actually go. And then, after you've actually done that, think beyond money, excuse the cat, Think beyond money. So money is always going to be the number one on most people's needs when they're looking at jobs, what they're going to take, what they're going to accept. But in actual fact, you need to start thinking outside of money. What other things can you use to actually attract and retain your staff, i.e. gym memberships, value-based businesses, making people feel valued and linked to the business and the general goals and progress that you're looking to make. And then also linked to that actually is getting your people strategy linked to your business values. That's going to be quite a key one. So we talk about that quite a lot at the moment on the channel. So we're looking at how you can get your values of your business and your people aligned together. So you're all on the same wavelength doing what you want to do and meeting those business visions. So in 
at number one. So the number one issue that we've found with the people-related management problems that most companies, most small companies actually have, is you do not have someone who's got the speciality skills in dealing with these problems in your business. Why? Well, it's not cost effective to have someone in there dealing with those issues. Plus, you wouldn't need them for a full-time post anyway. Specifically, if you've got probably less than 50 staff, you're not gonna need that on a day-to-day -day basis. But not having those skills at all in your business and not asking for that help, that's a bit of a problem. Because then what happens is, and we've discussed this before, is you start trying to do everything yourself and if you start trying to juggle all the balls only by yourself, you're going to drop a couple. It's just inevitable. It's going to happen. So not being too shy, not being too afraid, and not being penny-pinching and afraid to ask for help and support or getting some sustained support to come in ad hoc as you need it in the business is a bit of a problem, specifically with these issues, because it's actually quite a skilled process to actually come in and help to deal with some of these people problems that we've kind of discussed so far already. So like capability, action versus inaction, um, you know, things we haven't discussed around pay and pensions. These are all actually quite specifically skilled things to do that you may not have the skill set to do. And if you do not have that skill set, then you're not playing to your strengths. So the idea here is about playing and identifying where your strengths are and playing to those strengths, recognizing where your weaknesses are, and actually trying to get some help and support on those, and not being too afraid to ask for it either. And if you had to pay money for that, not being too afraid to pay the right amount of money to get the right type of support that meets with your business needs and vision to move forward. So in that sense of things, people management is quite a skilled thing. Dealing with people is hard. No one's the same. Everyone's different. No situation is ever going to be identical. So getting that skill set in is going to be important. So don't be afraid of delegating. Don't be afraid of asking for help and play to your strengths. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you think there's actually maybe a six, seven, eight, nine or ten, I don't know. Um, but if you think there's some more on there, please drop the comments below and let us know. Um, equally, please, if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. Um, and equally please subscribe I lost where that is on here so please also subscribe please let us know your comments please let us know your feedback and let us know if you think there's anything we've missed that you would have put on there maybe you would have changed this around your number one would have been slightly different okay have a great weekend everyone see you later